Whoa, that was a short chapter. End game bridge. Yeah, maybe. Okay, hello. Stop, stop, stop. I didn't get to buy more supplies either after the battle. Damn you. Let's check our heroes. Who do we have? So it's awesome. We upgraded Fast Salt and then we lost him. <laughs> Immediately afterwards we lost him. Oh. So troll. And if we had uh, that renown that we upgraded Fast Salt for, we could have upgraded Ivor to, to level 5. And put a god scale on him or something. Nice. Oh. No supplies. We have uh, 650 dudes and no supplies. Ah. <sighs> I'm sure we'll find supplies. <laughs> I hope he wasn't wearing any any good items at least. I don't remember. I think I gave him some uh, stupid armor. Or... Uh, you notice most of the Varl pacing while others sleep. Their brief conversations with each other uh, and other clansmen grow shorter and sharper. Go away, was one barl at a young girl asking him too many questions. All the clansmen stop and stare. Break the tension by making a joke. Yeah, that's probably a great idea. I'm impressed you've kept it together this long. Send the varl ahead in the caravan to put some space between you. What's wrong with you? <laughs> With 650 guys, there will be plenty to eat in a day or two, yes. I think we're gonna eat uh, the Varl first. More meat on them. Send the Varl ahead in the caravan to put some space between you. Might be good. I don't think I'm gonna try to make a joke. We could all use a bit of space to stretch, you say to the giants. Why don't you and the other Varl take the lead, set the pace, we'll follow. He looks at you and nods, appreciating the graceful compromise. <laughs> yes, it was very graceful. The giant explains. We live in the north for its space. Endless miles of snow, ice, mountains, fields space to be alone. There is no time for such things, but here is no time for such things. Understanding slowly trickles through the caravan, relieving some of the tension. <laughs> well, we have 511 clansmen, so I guess we could... Uh, morale is probably gonna start falling soon when they realize we don't have any food. Right now they're good. A flurry of snowfall seems to come out of nowhere and quickly thickens until you are unable to see the man in front of you. You shout out a complete halt, but the screaming winds drown out the sound. A day passes before the blizzard abates and clansmen start to reappear from the snowdrifts. It quickly becomes apparent that not everybody is where you last saw them and a quick search of the area is not enough to recover all the missing clansmen. Make a thorough search for lost clansmen so they can starve to get, uh, start to death together. Ask volunteers to scout the immediate area, make a bonfire and wait for missing members to return. Move on saying a blessing for the lost. Make a thorough search for lost clansmen, finding a secret cache of supplies. 
takes time to establish proper search teams, but you devise a way to quickly cover as much ground as possible. After a full day of searching, you find many survivors. But your successes are dampened by a number of frozen bodies and others who have simply vanished. Disheartened, you return to travel. Crap. Normal morale and no food. One varl starved to death. <laughs> I was screwed. It appears that large figures following from the uh, following from the direction of Einartoft. What? It appears that large figures following from the direction of Einartoft. What kind of sentence is that? Odd life watches intently before finally saying, "They have a cart. I can hear it." You slow to get a better view and spy a small caravan of Varl. Eventually, they catch up. Please give me Moger. Oh yes. Greetings, Ivor. It's been quite a while since we talked, hasn't it? I know you. Eubin. Never imagined you to be one of one to defy the king. What made you leave? Someone had to. What do you mean? Bellower is heading this way. Already? How is that possible? A group of Varl from Wyrmtau showed up uh, around the back of Einartoft, the long way. Bellower and his army chased them across the summer path, they said. Past Wyrmtau? That doesn't make sense. Bellower was at the bridge. He must have doubled back after that serpent appeared. While we fought on the bridge, he led half his forces round to approach Einartoft from behind. Attack on the bridge was a feint? <laughs> Yay! Everything we fought for was a lie. Don't let anyone tell you that Reg aren't clever. Einartoft will fall within a day. Maybe not. He's following you. I thought one of you might know why. <laughs> Look at him. No? Uh, uh. What? What? What's everyone looking at me for? Huh? You exchange nervous glances, but nobody speaks up. <laughs> Damn you, Awind. Must be me, then. Is there something I don't know? That's quite a grudge he's holding if he's coming for you, Ivor. Uh, it doesn't matter. Our only chance is get to Seagerholm. Juno will know what to do. Oh, he's deluding himself. Look at him. <laughs> we'll join you. I bring I bring supplies and warriors, and my friend Gunnolf here bears a heavy sword. I believe he'd be happy to swing it for you. Nice. Please say you brought Mogar also. Thirty supplies. That will last us two days. Great. Yay. Okay. Four days of supplies. Please tell me we got some uh, decent soldiers. Only Gunnolf. Well, Gunnolf is better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, Awind. Man, what's going on with him? You're living a lie, Awind. Tax never deflected. 10% chance. Two times strength damage, yeah, maybe we should use that on him. 24 renown, which we uh, might want to upgrade. Oh yes, we want to do that. We want to Ivor promote. Oh, wait a second, Ivor only has one arm now. Six points available, what the heck? Ah, oh, he lost, he lost all his promotion points when he uh, lost his arm somehow. But he still has them here. <laughs> Weird as it may sound. Awesome. Twenty-four. 
12 attack or 15 attack, 15 defense. Always good to have a bit of extra defense. Because you can always use exertion to increase your attack, but you can't use exertion to increase your defense. Yeah, we're gonna promote you actually. You're a badass. Eight points available. Are you? Whoa. Oh, yeah, we didn't confirm. Thought we suddenly got eight points for. 14 attack, 15 defense. That's pretty good. Then we can give you a god scale that gives you 3 plus armor plus 1 drawing aggro. That should satisfy you, I hope. 1 will per turn plus 1 armor per turn. Hmm. Yeah. Told you Ivor was a boss, he was just in shock. Yeah, yeah. It's a good explanation. As good an explanation as uh, as any other explanation I've heard. So Gunolf. Awen, you're too dangerous to be in our party. Ah <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Okay, it's actually lunch break time. So uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna take uh, a 30 minute lunch break now, or 25 minute lunch break now until uh, 11.30 UTC. So, but I'll come back and then we're going for three more hours. At least after that, and we'll see uh, how far we we get. Feels like things are moving along pretty quickly now after the bridge. Suddenly we're in chapter six. So uh, yeah, thirty minute break. Uh, suggest you you take a break as well and get something to eat. And I'll be right back. Putting up a little announcement here. So yeah, see you in 30, 25 minutes. So just waiting for the coffee to to finish, and then we'll continue. Ooh, hoo -hoo, man. Even yeah. I don't know, man. You're loose ca cannon, Ewind. Attack. <laughs> the irony is that he's a strong arm. He only has one arm. Oh. Plus three armor, plus one. Don't we have anything? Hmm. 
I have this feeling that we're gonna need a wind in the party. He has a very powerful, potentially very very pow powerful attack. But how to use it instead of Mogan maybe? Hogan and Mogan. Rumor, a strong arm. Why did it let come for Rook? It's a bad idea. Only level 3 plus characters allowed in this party. Uh, yep, that AoE damage. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really figured out what counts as diagonal when it comes to Varl, who are kind of, you know... Two by two square. Anyway, I'm gonna get that coffee and then we'll proceed. Let's do this. Talk to Gunnolf. Don't talk much, do you? We approach a massive green-clad varl who is sitting quietly by himself, eating bread. What a weird thing to do. So? Just wanted to know anyone who can cleave a dredge in two like that a little better. I'm Rook. What to know? Yubin asks me to chop a dredge in two. I chop him. Seems a bit pointless. Traveled with Yubin for long? Yes, long time. When I was young, I fight for another world. It did not work out. But I learned to swing a sword. Yubin pays well, gives me plenty of things to kill. To be honest, Maybe too many things these days. You like that sword, huh? No, I love this sword. Given to me by old Scrimmir himself. When I start working for you, Ben, he says, I protect the king's collection. I protect the king. Gunnolf makes an expression somewhere between pain and frustration. I couldn't save it though. Ah, okay. He makes a hand motion like an object falling from a tall height and exploding. The treasure chest, yeah. The wagon with all the... The tax wagon! We let it slip. It didn't feel very safe though. <sighs> Mattered a lot at the time. I think it doesn't matter now. Scrimmir is dead anyway. I'll let you finish your meal. Want to be friends with Gunnolf Rook? He pops uh, the last hunk of bread into his mouth. Keep food in the cart. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying. 
Uh, let's be on our merry way. Four days of supplies. Where are we? Where are we and where are we going? Show me. I think they could do something to optimize the load times. Einar Toft, Sigralm. Where are we going, by the way? Stens March. Gunnar's Hyog. <laughs> what? A varl named Gunnar was the first to discover this series of low-lying hills in the Wormscale foothills that look eerily sim similar to barrows and go on for days. Rumor has it that all manners of creatures have been buried in this massive grave. Uh, though the hill or two that have been dug up unearthed nothing of note. Pine Lun. A small cluster of pine trees that is... That is has been argued, man, are not in fact a part of the Lang Loom forest, which has historically brought up issues regarding the ownership of timber. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, well, I think we're probably not gonna make it to uh, to the town without resupplying. Caravan stops at a split in the road. Ahead, the path leading to Sigurholm veers off into the hills, which are now swimming with familiar black shapes. Great. Dredge that way too, grimaces Eyewind. The summer path leads straight to Sigurholm, while taking the main road will add several days. They're every way by now, replies Yubin. I suggest we go round past Haukstorp. Start cutting a path through the dredge, or go around past Haugstorp. What's the worst thing that could happen if we start cutting our path? We have to... yeah, that's not good. Uh, Eivind might be living a lie, but at least he's pretty smart, so maybe we'll trust him on this one. Go around past Haugstorp. But we don't have supplies for it, so we're gonna starve instead. I hate to say it, you tell Avent, but I'm not willing to walk into swarms of dredge anymore. Juno will have to wait. You turn toward the long round toward the long round around Haugstorp instead, hoping you've saved lives in the process. You doom them, you doom them to starvation, Rook. Plus five renown. Ooh, here's a village we can buy supplies, come on. Weak morale. I don't care. Has almost no effect on combat. The caravan consists of more clansmen than you ever expected. Accusations of stolen chickens, missing heirlooms and concerns over daughter's virtues are the sort of thing you hear relentlessly. Even fighters complain of spreading too thin to protect everyone. Try to keep people useful and too busy for petty squabbles. Form a council to handle the problems. Split the caravan. Be nice if I could just yeah, get rid of half the caravan. And carry on and put up with it. Form a council to handle these problems. Either we're going to put up with it, or I'm going to delegate responsibility to someone else who can take the blame. That's a good way to handle it. You select a few older members to resolve everyday issues, but infighting neuters their progress. Other members feel they could do a better job. Ultimately, while it buys some time, the council dissolves, tired of the thankless and demanding work. Great. At least I tried, huh? So come on, supplies. 
Oh, that's not even a village, is it? It is. You enter a village of miners uh, who want to know what has been happening recently between the rumblings of the quake and sightings of dredge in the distance. As you look around, you see a lot of elderly and children and know that these people will only be more mounts to field. Uh, encourage them to join you, let them make their own decision. That's their own decision. You welcome anyone who wishes to join the caravan. Uh, wishes to join caravan. Many do, while others choose to stay in their homes and see things through. You wish them luck. <laughs> More clansmen. One renown gets six supplies, that's pretty good. Even the godless will hesitate to strike down the loom mother's chosen few. Hmm. That's pretty useless. Sodreki Brur. A gleaming gemstone that seems to drive enemies into throthing rage. Right, we're gonna buy supplies. Six supplies for one renown, that's pretty good. Ooh, seven day supplies. It's amazing. Should we rest one day, maybe? Morale is just gonna drop anyway, right? Gonna rest one day. Ah, oh, didn't do anything for morale. Screw you! We're moving on. Look at that, shouts one of your clansmen. The caravan stops to watch dredge pooling into the village just passed through. I hope anyone who stayed behind got out alive, says Alette, but you have your doubts. I'm coming, says Iber, pointing out a line of dredge leaving the village and marching toward you. As you watch, the dredge in front fall falls over. Then the one behind it falls as well. You hear a twang to your left. Nid. The archery student of Odleif's, who you recall deftly shooting a snow rabbit, is firing arrows down the hill. Another dredge topples. That's incredible, says Odleif, squinting, but we should get out of here. Turn to the village looking for survivors. All this right, let's go. But why don't you come with us the next time you want to try out that bow, you tell Nid, who nods a smile on her face. Okay, so we got a new archer, I guess. Let's check that out, actually. Camp. See your stats. Uh, Nid. Bowmaster. What does a bowmaster do? Plus two range, 100% chance to hit. Bird of Prey makes it possible for her to strike units before they're able to get in attack range, which is usually what you want to do with a bow. In my opinion, I think every ranged unit would <laughs> like to have this ability to hit other units before they get into attack range. Puncture to be used against more enemies who may have been out of range from a normal shot. Okay. Bird of prey. Puncture. Puncture is really good. Just remember not to move. <laughs> Y 
Yeah. She looks pretty good. Would be nice to upgrade her. But I wouldn't uh, maybe exchange for Rook actually. We'll see the next battle. So let's talk to her. I don't know if we've ever spoken. I'm Nid, your Rook, I know. We've actually been traveling together for a long time. Isn't it strange how you can be so close to people and not know them? Every day I pass people I swear I've never seen before. I wanted to thank you for letting me join you. Uh, have you always been such a good shot? Honestly, I never even tried before Oddleif made me. I spent my whole life making clothes, cleaning. Oddleif's good, but I don't think it was all her doing. It feels right. I just look where I wanted to go. Anyway, I feel better. The caravan, the people worrying all day and making problems. Sometimes they really stew in their misery. I'm glad I can do something helpful. Yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, where are you from? I don't think you're from Skoger. I knew most of the people there. No, I had a house in Frostveller. But we were driven out when the dredge started to show up. My husband died trying to protect our home. My sons and I were thrown out into the fields. I'm sorry. Eckel's men killed my husband. Now Eckel is traveling with us. For a long time I was angry. Why did he get to live? Why did you decide for the rest of us? You look away momentarily, not sure what to say. But I've let it go. I have three sons, and I don't want them to grow up with hatred in their hearts. That's why I wanted to thank you. You're welcome. I should be going now, yeah. Don't think anything of it. We all have our own problems to deal with. Let me know if you need me to put an arrow in something. Yes. She returns to her tent where her boys are waiting for her. Cool. I'm not gonna rest for morale because that seems to take forever, so let's just get on the road. Let's see if we can give her any opportunity to fight. An old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost? You ask? He adjusts a leather strap on his head and says, no? Are you? He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Hmm. Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons. But I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his beard over his shoulder and puffs up his chest. The fighter grins and the stranger exhales, asking, What are we waiting for? Lead the way. Who are you and what are you doing out here? Call me Unnar or anything else you like, the old man says. A man goes where he pleases, doesn't he? His stern look is more comical than intimidating. Do you stop looking for answers? You're welcome to join if you can keep pace. I'm not gonna leave a man on the road. Keep pace? The old man puffs through his mustache. No fleeter than old Unar. And husbands, mind your wives. I'm cursed with a golden tongue, not silver. The caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start moving once again. Good. Morale boost. No morale boost. Crap. Aww. Oh, poor morale. There's a godstone up ahead. look for more fish scales. Come on people, that was fun the last time. We're not 
not stopping. The Godstone of Dunder passes around you. In the frozen climates here, it looks like the rock has split and is falling apart, held together only by the deep snow. Curiously, when standing between the stones, the wind drops off completely, picking up again once you pass through. I almost wonder if we should rest here for the night, says Ivor, who seems to have noticed the same thing. With all the snow around us, uh, around it, Reg might not even be able to find us. Stay here overnight, inspect the godstone and move on afterward. You know, if Ivor says that we should stay here, Ivor is always right. Stay here overnight. You walk around camp before settling in. Along each strand of Dunder's massive beard is carved a different part of his story. And you turn your head to and fro to read it. While the Loom Mother was the first to create, she soon found a counterpart in Dunder, who embodied her ideals in a masculine form. Dunder took some of her creations, gave them beards, and showed them the secret of smithing. I like the part where he gave them beards. Uh, though many remember him just as fondly for teaching them games and songs of mirth. Hmm. A uh, little recovery there. As the camp settles in, you notice a group of boys huddled around something. They show you an offering box carved into the godstone itself. Uh, the box is an elaborate construction of interlocking pieces which slide around when touched. We can't get it open, they tell you. It's like a puzzle. Try to open it. The boys take turns working out the puzzle and give you tips when it's your turn. Though you don't seem to make much progress. Eventually they leave to sleep until it's just you and a couple of other determined youngsters. We're gonna keep working on that puzzle box, all right? It's hard to know how long you spend sliding around the smooth puzzle pieces. But when people begin emerging from their tents, you know you're in trouble. Exhausted from a long sleepless night. Uh, worse still, the box remains closed as you shuffle warily al along with the leaving caravan. God damn it. <laughs> then we lost morale again. <laughs> Damn you, Dunder. Ooh, Hawkstorp. We don't have any renowns, so we can't buy any more supplies. A group of men with broad shoulders and thick cloaks approach the caravan. They might be outlaws you hear nearby. You hear nearby, and the idea quickly ripples through the clansmen. One of the strangers approaches, saying, We've run out of food. Any help would be welcome. His hard eyes reveal nothing of his motivations. Offer no food, but inform them of the dredge. Fight with us and earn your food. Offer them a few days' worth of supplies. Yeah, sure. Ask them how they came to be here. The men get nervous and reveal sturdy weapons. Your warriors step forward until the leader holds out a hand, saying loudly, The last group to ask us questions tried to kill us. Tried. Let's keep this simple. Will you help us or not? Crap. I don't have any food. Fight with us and earn your food. I don't need fighters. I only need food myself, to be honest. Decline to help the strangers. We have no food to spare, you tell the stranger. The man gravely nods in understanding before raising a hand and dropping it. Arrows suddenly slice through the caravan and people scream. Great. Asshole. In the commotion, they grab what they can and run. They're gone before you can take stock of the situation. And after patching up the wounded, you have nothing to show for it but a little less food and some dead clansmen. We can't do anything about it. 
crap. Well, well. In the distance, Hawkstorp smolders like an old campfire. Even from here you can see black figures shambling through it. That looks like a dead town, remarks Ivor, confirming your impressions. There's usually survivors, Odleif reminds you. Check it out, just in case. I hope others would do the same for me. Dredge are nothing we haven't faced before. Ivor grunts, but otherwise says nothing. Besides, it might throw Bellower off the scent a bit. You had a day's march out toward Hauktorp. Then we lose some more clansmen to starvation. As soon as you've stepped foot in a small town, you think you've made a mistake. It's thoroughly littered with corpses. Within moments, the dredge are upon you as though you stirred up an angry hornet's nest. You draw your weapons. Woo! Use A wind or not. A wind or nid. It's a bit late to start leveling up a new character. Ah. <sighs> The loading times are very exaggeratingly long. Let's see, what the heck? 22 attack, are you kidding me? Why don't you just chop off my balls? And be done with it. Twenty-one defense, twenty-one two attack, man. <coughs> What's that? Dredge fire slinger. Okay. Should not have used her. supposed to have a longer range. We're gonna have to go for him immediately. When does he move? Um, he makes me really nervous. Okay, 20 moves last. Good. Actually, move up and crush this slinger in one one fell blow here. Just engage him straight, straight up. Might actually be best to leave that slinger to Trygvi. How about some armor break? I'll 
six armor break should leave you properly prepared. I think you're gonna regret that. Supposed to get her first kills. Okay, I completely misjudged that situation. Ivory gets to move again. In that case, we're pretty safe. Guess we're gonna give room for Gunnolf to move there. Gonna shoot him for armor break. Four should do it. Gunnoff's gonna move here and then... Uh, three armor breaks, that's no good. about nine damage uh, should render you pretty useless oh yeah summoner and if Trigvi moves there he can't impale crap Right now Ivor is still ahead, so we can still kill him. But if he moves in here, we're not gonna be able to reach him. Man. Irritating. We might have to provoke him. To go attack us here. It's a 
11 attack. That five armor break. I'll screw you too. And we have to move. Nothing, right? Oh yeah, it did actually block him. Hmm. Smarter than I expected. If we knock him into... Uh, it's probably not gonna do anything. Good for him. Impale. You can run and bleed all you want. We're gonna deal with you when we're done with the rest of this dredge. Scum. He's next. Maybe we should shoot him. Oh, we can't. Interesting. Gunnel finishes him off. What happens then? He moves. Slugfest, right. Guess we're gonna impale you again. Can't knock you back. But you're gonna bleed to death anyway.
could use exertion now. Not gonna do that. So yeah, Gunnar's gonna run in and kill him. I will push him forward in turn, but yeah, it's okay. That's just fine. Uh, three defense though. I'm gonna make the mistake not to attack the little guy. I'm gonna attack the little guy. I'm gonna smash him. Just because I have one arm doesn't mean I'm not dangerous. So what do we do with you? Free armor break. Two damage. Don't you dare. Case second wave. Ow. So is Gunnolf gonna get yet another kill? Looks like it. This town is nothing but ghosts, and now covered in more dredged bodies too. Great. Remarkably, as you're about to leave, you find an old man sitting quietly in a tattered market stall, with a couple of items in front of him. That's pretty lame. He hums to himself as if nothing were wrong and seems to be in shock. Your clansmen gather him into the caravan before you leave. There's a market. That was the lamest explanation for a market ever. Let's get those supplies. The one Renan gets one supply. Are you? No, no supplies. Great. Nid, get the hell out of my battle party. Right, no supplies. Yeah, all the winning. Losing far more people to starvation than I'm losing to, to battle, I have to say. Lost one battle so far in this game, and that was due to a misunderstanding. I thought I could switch my fresh fighters in the second wave once. A well-tended farm with plenty of livestock draws the caravan's attention. Upon your arrival, the farmer and his workers stand defensively within plain sight, crude weapons at the ready. 
Their crossed arms make their thoughts clear without a word. Leave the farmers and their animals alone. Come with us, it's not safe here. Offer some kind of trade for the livestock. We don't have any trade. You warn the farmers of the approaching dredge, but the man spits and says, This land is my life. I lose that, may as well be dead. The farmhands slowly nod their agreement, neither joining you or lowering their weapons. I'm not threatening the farmer, I'm not taking the livestock by force. Oh, let's just starve them. What's his is his, you say to the caravan. No sense fighting those trying to protect themselves. Grumbling bounces around through the clansmen, but the caravan is once again moving. Yeah, grumble all you want here. Starve yet all the same. That's a little different godstone. Looks a bit fake to me. The godstone for Ingrid, the goddess of knowledge, looks on as the caravan takes a much needed rest. I will shoo some children away from a solitary dredge slinger lying dead beneath a stone. Should we, should we be worried about that, you ask Ivor, pointing to the dredge body. I don't think so, he replies. Still, couldn't hurt to have a few guards look around. Hours pass without warning. Inspect the godstone. Ingrid's godstone is carved with ancient runes which don't make much sense to you. Though Eivind tells you some of the menders have deciphered them. It's how the menders learn the language of the gods. Past the largest stone, a long series of slabs contain more writing all the way down the hill. The odd thing, he tells you, is that the writing occasionally changes depending on who is reading it. Usually it describes the history of the gods, but it can be about nearly any topic. Sadly, Iwin doesn't know how to read it himself. Juno could, he says. Juno, Juno, Juno. Uh, as you're readying to depart, you hear screams from near the main godstone. The same boys, so curious about the dead dredge before, are shrieking and pointing. For a moment you think it must not have been dead. Uh, but then you see that they have opened a wrapping that was in the dredge's hands. Wait, says Ivor, his arms crossed, uh, his arms across your chest. This shouldn't be seen. Get everyone away. A chill sweeps over you. A let pushes past in gasps. Stop, shouts Ivor, but the curious onlookers have already seen it. Uh -oh. Leave it. On the ground before the dead slinger is a small stony figure, its hands searching for something it can't find. That's a baby. That dredge is a woman? We've been killing women. We've been slaughtering women and children this whole time. Leaving them to die? In a war, it's only the males who fight. Well, Varl would seem to be only males. Uh, we've been fighting this dredge the whole way. Why are women with children on their backs attacking us? They're not invading. They're running. Everyone stops dead in their tracks. The entire caravan is gathered around aghast. <clears throat> When I spoke to Juno, she told me something was coming. She didn't know what. A darkness. Something black is covering the world, and the dredge are running from it, just as we are running from them. 
the serpent, the quake, it's all the beginning of the end. Ivor, you knew. Why? Why didn't you say something? <laughs> Ivor? When I was young, I killed one of the Sunder during the Second Great War. We called it Raze. Every time we would build our defenses, it would flatten them and push us back again. It became separated from the rest of the Varl and stumbled... I became separated from the rest of the Varl and stumbled upon Raze deep in a snowstorm. Alone. She was nursing. I threw my axe. It twisted in the wind. Her son died in her arms. She was so pathetic, kneeling in the snow. She didn't even try to stop me when I took her head. What a hero. That's how I killed a Sunder. When I found my way to Grafheim, the Varl wa wanted to make me Kender, next to be king. I left. Walked until I ended up in Skogur, where no one knew what I had done. The only sound is the wind blowing through the trees. Oh, nice. For a long time nobody says a thing until a child breaks the silence. What do we do with the baby? She asks. A lump forms in your throat. Looking at the small obsidian creature squirming before you. Let's be real. We're not gonna leave a baby. Insist on taking it with the caravan. And people can say what they want. You argue strongly for showing mercy and humanity. Some of the women in the caravan hesitantly agree to take in the uh, dredge infant, while others are furious about bringing it along. Not long afterwards, one of the women comes to you. Its swaddling was being held by this, she says, giving you a hairpin that looks distinctly undredge like An inscription on the silver almost slips your notice. Persevere. From the goddess herself, if you ask me, the woman tells you. Badrun silver brooch. Nice. Almost feels like I was rewarded this time. Usually this game punish me, punishes me for making like moral decisions. <laughs> okay, let's see what that is. you say one strength deflected uh huh is that good I don't know Chance for two times strength damage or one strength deflected on every attack. Hmm. That ten percent chance has happened exactly once during this game. Maybe we should have that uh, damage reduction instead. I thought it was going to eat everyone in the night. Well, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Even though we got a brooch, maybe we actually, you know, a lettuce eaten the next day or something. Wouldn't surprise me, actually. And the baby starved to death the next day. <laughs> You're making the usual rounds when you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area that Varl have gathered. From the area that Varl have gathered, they've gathered an area. I rejoins you as you approach. Yubin. 
Yeah, you'd rather be known for falling asleep and dying in the corner of a mead house than battling asunder? No, I'd rather be known not for dying. Don't even know what you're worried about. I did this a hundred times in the Great Wars. Take some warriors, plow head first into the dredge. They follow you into the hills. Get lost. Now they're not following you. When you did this a hundred times, did they have a bellow have Bellower leading them? Have you never heard about the time I hit Bellower in the head with a throwing axe? <laughs> Both Varl halter the bait when they suddenly notice you watching. Don't stop on my account. Careful, my friend. A lot of old history getting thrown around here. The warriors were just noting that there's a damn good number of dredge on our asses. Bellower pulling up the rear. This one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks. How about some gratitude? Thought you'd be, thought you'd be happy to finally be the oldest Varland land, Uben. I'm never happy to lose more Varl Krumer. Besides, I'm not convinced you're really older than me. <laughs> oh, the petty squabbles. Uh, old rivaler you got here. Comments like that remind me I've already wasted too much time doing nothing. In the old days, I'd already be halfway to the battlefield by now, speaking of which... You coming, Ingvar? You could ask Bellower for your arm back. Don't think so. Not exactly in the mood right now. Alright then, I'll tell Harderborg. You said hello, so we're gonna lose Krumer. Krumer and a good many Varl warriors head out toward the growing army of Dredge. Is he going to come back? He always has before. But this time feels different, I fear. Okay. I'm glad I didn't just upgrade you. Like I did Fast Salt when he disappeared. We're starving to death here, come on, game. Don't even have any Varl anymore. A scout returns with a nearly frozen child. I almost stepped on her in the snow. Looks like she must have been running from something, he says. Patches of blue mottle of blue mottle her pale skin, but her chest rises and falls ever so slightly. Even just carrying her along could kill her in a state like this, says a woman. Could be in danger here, points out another. Keep moving, but let the healers tend to her. Stop the caravan for rest and tend to the girl. Man, uh, I don't know. Honestly. If we stop the caravan, we're gonna have to fight Dredge, I think. But, uh, nah, keep moving, but let the healers tend to her. We're starving, so I'm sorry. Fighters stay alert for any threat while the caravan moves on. The healers rub the girl's arms and legs under blankets to no avail. An hour later, one healer approaches you with tears in her eyes. She says nothing, only shakes her head. Oh, crap. Every day we lose like 20 dudes, so... Gather round, doubters! Echoes a shout in the distance as Krumer and his band of warriors break through nearby foliage. And behold the invincible Varl! Uh, the 
Caravan is thrilled to see Krumer return safely. Awesome. Did the plan work? asks Ubin. Work? responds Krumer. Of course it worked. Same old dredge. Should be another day or two at least before they even find their own asses. 20 renown for that, nice. And if you apologize, I'll tell how I found these, Krumer says, toss tossing him a pair of leather gloves. They look big enough for a varl. He leans in close, whispering so Ubin can't hear. Had something to do with a raven's nest and a hair tie. Okay. Thunder's hand, awesome. Camp, quickly. Bet he was followed, yeah. Thunder's hand. Ooh, plus three strength. <laughs> Level five item. That's pretty cool. Plus three armor. Right now I think I prefer armor, but plus three strength is pretty nice as well. I could give it to gun off and he would have 21 strength. We could upgrade him. We can actually upgrade him. Hmm. An intriguing prospect. We wouldn't have that much left for supplies, but on the other hand we've been starving this whole journey, so why not? Nine armor though. strength that should be pretty good uh -uh. let's see oh yes just waiting for uh, losing gun off now immediately I was thinking about putting both points on uh, defense but Seems like, uh, you know, I want to have the magical number of 20 there. So, let's make speed to Sigurholm. Minus 5 clansmen. God damn it. Day, day 100. Process, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flipped. Proud home sinking into muddy water. A side effect of the quake. What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains? <laughs> Probably. One catastrophe to another, says Oddleif, as you pull into Sigerholm. The town appears to be sinking into the lake. The townspeople peek from dark windows and makeshift hovels further up the hill. No, says Eowind, looking frantic. Where is she? He runs to the front of the caravan, looking out over the water. Juno isn't there here and you, uh, you get the creeping feeling you're not welcome either. Great. Going upriver uh, looks out of the question. The beach is bare aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fishing boat. 
You reluctantly set up camp in the sinking town. Probably no supplies. All I'm saying is how long are you willing to wait? While taking stock of caravan, you've in inadvertently walked into a debate between Odleif and Awind. As long as we need to. And I think getting out of here... I, I think we need to get out of here. I don't feel good about this place. Why? What's wrong? Something doesn't feel right. The people here are staring at us like those vultures in the wastes. I'm sorry, Awind. I think Odleif's right. I saw a man. The whole time we were setting up, he was just watching me. Uh, in a creepy way. Alright. And how long before the dredge find us here? Juno will come. Just give it a little more time. Rook, listen to me. I need you to trust me on this. Oh, great. So it's my decision. Oh, I see. One Renown gets three supplies. Hmm. How many days would that be? Three days of supplies. Yeah, okay. Don't have any choice. I guess. Talk to him. Let's see. You're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Uh, oh, Juno. Worry doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here or something has happened to her. Are you sure what you saw was real? It could have been a dream or, I don't know, you were pretty exhausted. I, I, I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Um, don't tell the others I said that. <laughs> <laughs> You're living a lie, Iwind. You're living a lie. Come on. Uh, I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. What is it like to be a mender? Being a mender? I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me. They knew uh, very young that I would join the order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father, both menders. The guild is for lots of people now. Builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? No, no, that's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know you know. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this. So we don't end up scaring people. Oh yeah, don't scare anyone. You're a loose cannon, Ivind. How exactly does weaving work anyway? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Everything is part of the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. Are you inviting me to look at your staff? Oops. Double click. Er, like I said, hard to explain. <laughs> I guess we didn't learn anything by looking at his staff. Why is Bellower still following us? I saw Grofheim. I saw Grofheim as it burned. Even gets a faraway look in his eyes. The sunder blew through it like a tempest. The Varl fell in thousands. Most of the sunder left the city and headed south. Who knows where, where they are now. They might be destroying every town they come to. Or heading toward Arborang. Bellower stayed in Grofheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Einartoft, I thought he must want to wipe the Varl off the map completely. 
then he came after us. Hmm. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Ray's. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. What did you do? He knows something. Do you think this is the end times? I... I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent said the darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long that will take, or what it means even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The Menders are in Arborang. If we can find ships and make it, uh, make it the capital. If we can find ships and make the ships a capital, yes, we might have a chance. You're delusional, Eowind. I won't take any more time. You're obviously delusional. Oh, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spend all day worrying about serpents or sunder. I think a lot of people are intimidated or scared, maybe, of me. <laughs> You're living a lie. Don't worry. It's nothing new. I'm used to it. <laughs> maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. Even. Living a lie. <laughs> Man, four day supplies. Uh, we're not gonna wait for Juno here for sure. Uh, great. Poor morale. We're leaving. Rook, wait, please, Awen begs. She said she'd be here. We need her. You can tell he's terrified of leaving, as though he'd be giving up on you now. She's not coming. Awen looks out across the lake with a thousand mile stare. He says nothing. We've got problems, says Ivor. The whole place is flooded. We could try to walk the muddy parts, but it'll be slow going. We could try to float the caravan over the lake, but we might tip or get stuck. We could just go around the whole thing, but... No idea how long that'll take. What do you think? Attempt to ford the river, cork the wagons and float across, making it our capital city on the waves. Like Awin the delusional wizard suggested. Pay some locals to help. These locals are not very trustworthy. Detour around the flooding. We're not doing that with four day supplies. Floating across is gonna definitely lose us a few wagons. We don't trust the locals, but maybe they are okay seeing us off from here. We'll see. Pay some locals. Pay with what though? Shit. The locals become a lot more helpful when you swallow your pride and start offering food for help crossing the river. Nice. They give you small fishing boats to borrow and show you the area with the best chance of making it across. You hope your luck holds out as you launch from the shore. Probably lost supplies there. Uh, the spite, or you suspect because of your vigilance, the locals from Seagerholm don't try anything underhanded as they take you in their small boats to the other side of the lake uh, over several trips. You leave them with a generous amount of food and they row back to their town. You hope it's worth it to buy some space from Bellower who will have to drag his armies through the mud on foot. But these guys are all getting killed very soon. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the food, assholes. Ten renown. <laughs> uh oh. 
As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of fire pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon, no, and a few tents, yes, less mouths to feed. A woman cries out, my boy, and points to a burning tent closest to the outlying varl. Two of the giants are motionless, staring at the spreading fire with terror in their eyes. Shit. Command the Varl to help. Varl hate fire. Organize the peasants to put out the fires. Go in after the boy yourself. Wrapping your cloak around you, the smoke, flames and tent become a blur as you grab the boy and slice through the back canvas with your, with your hunting knife. You meet the ashamed look of the older Varl while the crowd shears on your heroic act. Unfortunately the supply wagon did not make it. And the boy died of starvation the next day. What in the depths was that about? You muttered to yourself. Something about the fire, Oddleif tells you. I've heard of this before. They don't like it. it doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. Well, I know Varl, Varl don't like fire, so what? Ooh. Yep, yep. One of the clansmen was a young boy, I'm sure. As you're about to head off to sleep for the night, Onef pulls you aside. Onef hasn't done much this whole trip. Now he pulls me aside. I have a couple of concerns I wanted to speak to you about, he says, in private. Find a quiet place to talk. What's on your mind? How well, uh, well do you know the people traveling with us? Well, I don't know you. How many strangers are in the caravan now? Is this about Echel? You were picked up quite a few. The group decides, not just me. Actually, I, I decide, so... Who are you worried about? I've been watching folks since I joined you. Your companions from Skogar, they're loyal. I mean, it seems pretty clear that they died to protect you. I suppose I'd do the same. To protect me, yes. What about the Varl? You don't even know half those warriors. You're telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now? After everything that happened at Einartoft. I trust Ivor to handle it. He's fearless, I'll give you that. But look at him, he's run ragged. He can't be there, uh, there all the time. What happens the first time the Varl don't want to do what you tell them? If Krumer gave the word, I guarantee at least half would follow. Let's be honest. They could take this caravan by force at any time if they wanted to. They haven't. Doesn't mean they won't. They're not the biggest problem though. There's a mender with us. A mender who pulls lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. Myself, I think we lucked out when his mentor didn't show up in Sigrom. Eowyn just, Eowyn's just the apprentice. What in the depths is his master capable of? Think about it, Rook. What do you really know about Eowyn? Well, I know he's living a lie. I heard they were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dredge started showing up. Then an enormous serpent shows up at Einartoft after tearing the world in half, takes one look at Eowyn and bolts. Suddenly they need our help instead of the Mender Council? How does that make any damn sense? Oh, don't worry about that, Onif. It's just poor story narrative writing. <laughs> Ewind could have taken control long before now. 
You make some valid points, sure. You might be distorting what happened. Eamon couldn't take control of his own stuff. Uh, you might be distorting what happened. Or Eamon might be. I'm grateful for what you've done uh, to get us this far, Rook. But it's always been about trust. I think it's time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing personal. Suddenly you gasp for air. When you look down, Onef is holding a knife buried deep in your ribs. Fuck you, Onef. Your vision blurs and blood fills your sight. How does blood fill my sight from being stabbed in the ribs? You gasp again. There's a bird whistle and the camp becomes a blur of motion. Onef's fighter from Frostweller leap into action, cutting people down. Oh. As Oddleif uh, turns to fire on the men, Onef runs her through and pulls the blade from her back without even breaking a stride. She drops like a sack of flour. Onef uh, heads straight for a lad who freezes in unbridled terror. You rise to your feet through the pain. Egil and Oddleif are dead. Egil. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Egil died like the f in Skoger. Jesus. Wow, of course he's dead. That was like 100 days ago. Somehow you find the strength to cleave the nearest traitor in two, but you can't find the breath to shout. You think your lung might be punctured. Okay, he has killed uh, Oddleif like that. Onef clutches Alette's wrist amidst the commotion, tosses her bow aside and pulls her into the deep woods. Her eyes meet yours across the campsite. No, her lips say, though you can't hear the words. A dozen men appear between you as Ivor steps into view, as fearsome as you've ever seen him. It's about time somebody does something about this. Okay, um, I wasn't really using Oddleif, but uh, it's a bit strange just killing her in a dialogue scene. Uh, Guess we're gonna substitute Mogan or Hogan or Nid or Krumer. Yeah, it's a bit uh, interesting. Right. He has one archer. I guess he's a bit uh, pissed off that I didn't use him in any battle. Thrasher veteran. Well, we can one shot. Well, not one shot, but we can pretty much. Knock three damage per hit for one round. Okay. We can definitely one shot an archer. Even unfortunately has to be kept far away. Here's the only place to keep him, I guess. Traitor Onef. I guess I should have uh, trusted Ekel instead of Onef. 
wonder where you can mix it up like this. How much do we need to kill her? 14. kind of order here. to shoot. These guys are pretty neutralized. really reach him unfortunately could run up and smash Kill him, what happens? Who's next? Actually, I don't care. This is uh, not a difficult battle by any means. Yes. 
seven attack. to get one shot the next round. or two armor break. How about we just kill you? Wind. Man. He's stonewalling. Don't really give a damn. We use he resisted everything, wow. So one hit. One hit, but no. Right. Pretty screwed, sir. <laughs> Double attack. Double strength damage there, nice, Trigby. What's the second time we get that? Mm -mm. Where is it left? Shouts Ivor, tearing through the nearest bandit, but you're already hobbling into the deep woods where they disappeared, ignoring the battle raging behind you. In a haze of pain you start to think you've lost the tracks, then you hear a let screaming in the distance, followed by silence. You tear through the trees. In a small clearing a let lies with her back against a tree. Her hands and her clothes are covered in blood. She stares vacantly ahead, unblinking. Beside her is the body of Onef, an arrow buried in his right eye, as if placed there by hand. She looks in your direction and then at Onef. I killed him, she says. Good. Good for you. Good for him. Because if you hadn't killed him, we would have like Onef roast tonight. Let, uh, are you alright? You 
cringe as much from the pain as the appearance of Alette after her bloody struggle with Onef. No, I'm... I'm... I'm not hurt. I had no choice. Dad, your chest. You're bleeding. Suddenly she is at your side, putting pressure on the wound. I can... I can fix this. Where's my needle? Oddleif. Anyone. Ivor. I found them. Just as your sight goes black, you see Ivan, Ivor and the Let standing over you. He's going to make it. Your eyes open to the sounds of Let's voice. Normally, uh, a wound like that. I only hope I did enough. Living that lie. I'll survive. Dad. Let stops herself from hugging your bandaged chest, pulling your head to her instead. The words come out easier than you expected. Oddleif. Uh, it's a good thing Eowyn was here. She's going to pull through, though it was a nasty wound. Okay. Thought for sure she was dead. We managed to kill most of those traitorous sons of bitches, and the rest fled into the woods. There were a lot of people I couldn't save. You did everything you could, Eivind. Nobody expects you to raise the dead. Eivind frowns deeply, putting a hand to his forehead. Why did Onef do this, Rook? He was talking to you right before it happened. thought my leadership would get us killed. I don't know. I don't know why he did it. I have a good idea. Ekel killed a good half dozen of Onef's men by himself. He told me Onef was running Frostweller the whole time. Really. He left Frostweller behind when he saw a better opportunity. Guess that relationship is over. So Ekel never said anything about uh, Onef being the real force behind the throne, so, so to speak. Interesting. That doesn't make a goddamn sense. Sorry. Ekel was always just a barking dog you put in the yard to find out who your enemies are. Yeah. It was no accident Onef went after those of us from Skoger. He must have thought with us gone he'd take the banner and the rest would fall in line. Or at worst, they'd take all the supplies for themselves, all the zero supplies, and leave the rest as dredge bait. We have to be more careful, we can't just let anyone join the caravan anymore. Where do you draw the line, Ivor? I don't know, Rook. I really don't. None of this changes the fact that Bellower is out there somewhere following us. That swamp around Seagrawl might buy us some time, but we got to keep moving. Your body aches all over, but Ivor's right. The road calls. The caravan is already starting to pack up camp. Mmm. <laughs> Echo. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna take two minute, two, three minute break and then I'll be back and we'll uh, try to sort this mess out.
<laughs> Trigvi did warn you about trusting men who wear helmets. You are correct. He did. We should have trusted him all along. Trigvi knows. Man. Probably as Ekel also wears helmets, so man. Um, check with Oddlay first. How is the wound? Notice Oddlay winces as she rises to greet you. It's doing a lot better. When I saw it happen, I thought for sure. Oh, well, I'm glad. I'm really glad you're. You would have missed me, Rook? She smiles. Without a wind, uh, without a wind, that's all you could have done. Instead, you'll have to put uh, up with my crap a little longer. It still aches like you wouldn't believe, though. Or maybe you would. Heard you took a stabbing yourself. I guess things could have gone worse. <clears throat> How's your husband doing, by the way? Odleif's smile falls like a lead weight. I'm sorry, Rook. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. He died in Einartoft. It just didn't seem like the right time to, you know, put that burden on you. I should have said something. Yes, you should. It's been lonely without him. I'm glad to have a let around. And you, Rook. Oh, we're such a... Miserable little family. Uh, what do you think about the caravan? You mean, should we start kicking people out? That's a tough one. Usually I'd be the first to give you a dirty look for suggesting it. On the other hand, I got a sword in my back. Oddly thinks for a long moment before sighing. Don't send anyone away. Just make sure nothing happens to Alette. Well, that didn't really work out the last time, did it? Let you get some rest. I'll take you up on that. You know, you're welcome to keep me company. <laughs> Perfect timing. We're both stabbed, you know, come on. When I'm a little more awake, I mean, I'll talk to you later. Yes, do that. <laughs> Ekil, you mad son of a bitch. Look who it is. Still not dead. How are things, Rook? Twitch, twitch. I can never guess with you, Ekil. I heard you helped drive off the traitors when Onaf attacked us. And it leaves me wa always wondering. What's your deal? And it also leaves me wondering who untied you. Because, you know, as I remember it, we took you prisoners. Took your weapons, tied you, and then I hear you defend the caravan. Oh yeah, she wants it. Oh yes, of course. Uh, what the hell? What's your deal? I'm not so hard to understand. Why don't you try asking instead of telling? <laughs> See, I'm back in the right moment. Yeah. When we start talking about how she wants it, yes. We could use a good fighter, unbind Ekel. Wow. Let's be. Okay, so he is bound. So, man. Ah, this story writing is screwing my head. How do you explain this? Why didn't you warn us about Onef? Didn't I? How many times did I have to call him a traitor before you got the message? What did you want me to say? Watch out, Onef's going to murder your whole family. Yeah, kind of. He didn't fill me in on the details. He was always like that. 
In fact, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he tried to convince you to off me. But listen, I don't need to know, so keep it to yourself. Why did you stick with him? I don't know, Rook. Family makes you do weird things. You know what the worst part is? We became... We became kin when he married my sister. She died of a fever one night. But she didn't. She wasn't sick. He killed her. I don't know why he did it. Maybe he just felt like it. I was so furious. I got so angry that I, I wanted him to beg. I could kill him without a second thought, but that, that wasn't enough. I wanted him to feel sick about it, puke his guts out. And somehow, somehow what that turned into... What? Over time. <laughs> what? He never cared and I gave up and did what he wanted. This doesn't make any sense. He wanted to kill him? Oh my god. This part hasn't made any sense at all. <laughs> yeah, Echo looks very trustworthy, always. Don't know how it happened, no. Neither does the scriptwriter. But when I attacked you in Frostweller, guess I'll just say it wasn't my idea. You never attacked me in Frostweller. Remember? I've never fought with you. Jesus. Ah, we could use a good fighter, come on, Echo. Could have killed a lot more of them without my hands bound, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I'm still waiting for an explanation on that. I'm sure the scriptwriter will give me one. So, Rook, I don't have to be your prisoner anymore. So you're going to let me walk around with my own axe and everything. That doesn't mean I'm not watching you. I can accept that. You're a good man. And I need to take a piss, yes. You're not the only busy man around here, you know. You shake your head as Ekel steps away from camp. I'm <laughs> glad it's not just me finding this part a little bit abstract. No. Uh... Man, this part was just confusing. They didn't really do, I mean, suddenly they say, oh, Egil was killed, yes, 100 days ago, in Skogur. <laughs> oh. Man. So, Ekel, great, we have Ekel. Grudge wielder, nice. Knocks back all units up to two spaces. Ekel leaps to great heights before bringing down his axe on the enemy, causing all units adjacent to him to be knocked back, friend or foe. Affected units take normal strength damage plus one strength damage for each space they're pushed. Okay, guts. What? Shield wall, okay. Great. Rook, gun off, trigvi, trigvi, yeah. Hmm. Let, can't I upgrade you? A unit required in party, I see. Yes, I can upgrade you for 15 renown. You know, you're pretty effective like, as you are, like you uh, with your current stats. <laughs> B. 
They also seem to refuse the fact we fled the town rather than get caught up in their crazy power struggle. Yeah, I know. I could see that one coming miles away, so I, I never entered town. We forced the gates and then we left. The game does not care. Uh, but yeah, I guess it can become a bit uh, difficult to sort out your plot lines, but still. Well, we can't buy any supplies. We have 19 renown, I'm gonna save it. And we'll see if we can use it. Later. Keep on moving. Keep the caravan moving. And the clans people dying. I like how more fighters and Varl uh, are dying if you look to the total numbers. Actually, a higher percentage of fighters and Varl dying than the clansmen. Interesting. A mother screams, flood the caravan. Her daughter lies dead in a tent. We all know who did this, she spits, staring directly at the woman she scuffled with previously. Murder over a marriage? In these times, something must be done. The accused woman remains silent. You know what? I would take everyone involved and drown them in the nearest lake for being so freaking stupid right now. But okay. Uh... Investigate the death. A healer joins you in inspecting the young girl's corpse. An old infection, says the healer. No punctures, no choking, no poison. She died of disease. You report the news to the caravan. The mother admits that she had always known her daughter was ill, and everyone moves on. Thank you. Jesus. See? 10% of the Varl, 1% of the clansmen died. I thought the Varl are like hundreds of years old. They should be able to, to starve a little bit. <sighs> the villagers here are completely oblivious to the destruction that is coming. All we've seen is some dark figures far off, they tell you. Aside from a few young families, they're reluctant to pick up their things and join you. It's okay, we don't really want any more people anyway. Ooh. One Renown gets five supplies, which is good, but look at this. Enormous fishing hook for two armor break. That fishing hook. Are we going to let our people starve for a fishing hook? I'm inclined to say yes. Man, I could give it to Rook, for example, and he could enjoy five armor break. Which would easily compensate losing two willpower. They're giants, they require far more food to live. Plus the clansmen are probably eating the Varl when they die, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a reinforcing system there. Uh, yeah, two armor break is so good. Uh, 
50 supplies. We can get six days worth of supplies. Or 13 days worth of supplies. we do what we do for fishing hooks beautiful beautiful armor break Yeah, I'm not really trying to promote, I'm trying to see her items, but yeah, I know. This system could be improved vastly. Now let's see, one, plus one armor, plus one strength, plus one willpower. Hmm. Is there anyone else could use two willpower? How are you on willpower? Hogan and Mogan. Oddleif can use willpower. Right, six whole days of supplies thanks to the fishing hook. I always put the caravan first. Don't let me hear you say otherwise. They're gone stone. Up ahead, a scout shouts, some giant hall, but it's empty. You approach the structure, but recognize none of the markings. The wall seems unsteady at best. Finally, sleeping beneath a roof, you overhear. Several families begin unpacking. Oh yeah. Keep everyone back until you're certain it's safe. It was abandoned for a reason, leave it. Look for any clues about why it was abandoned. Keep everyone back until you're certain it's safe. Several volunteers search the building with weapons drawn. Just as they are announcing an all clear, a var leans against the support which gives way and a third of the structure crumbles. Luckily no one is injured, but you leave the crumbling building behind. Yeah, no surprises there. While walking, the words of a mother's song reach you. It's soothing, nuanced, and about your current journey. When she finishes, a man begins a tale of his own in verse. The woman quickly responds with another poem, and the entire caravan slows to listen to the entertaining competition. <laughs> Join the crowd and cheer on the competitors. Ignore the poetry content and keep an ear out for danger. Join in with a verse of your own. Let's hear a witty verse from... Um... Whole caravan is shocked when the first lines of your poem rings out. You mimic both contestants, adding your own spin on their tales. At last, you end with a joke at your own expense and the peasants wildly applaud. <laughs> Rook. Woo. Morale bonus. Don't worry, it's gonna fall again in one day.
That's more like it. It <laughs> was such a clown, yeah, I know. Taken to desperate measures to, to keep order in this caravan. Posing godstone of Björulf approaches. His severe visage makes it uh, feel like he's watching you even now. The caravan spreads out, happy to be free of the confining forest and in open fields. Hogan pulls you aside to show you some red berries growing on an ash tree that looks like it was chopped down long ago. These shouldn't be growing here, he says excitedly. I haven't seen these in a long time. He and Mogan busily go about collecting the berries. In fact, in honor of Björolf, some of the caravans crack kegs of mead and wine before anyone can stop them. To the only god that matters, they shout. Everyone drinks and you're glad for the merriment that has swept over the caravan. Uh, okay. Join Hogan in collecting berries. Join the merrymakers or inspect the godstone. I always inspect the godstone. You look up at the godstone. Björlf's head is surrounded by images of casks and drinking horns. Though he is always depicted as being stern, Björlf was one of the most popular gods of men Varl. The one who taught them how to brew. Ooh. Seems like more than coincidence that the long fields around Björlf's stone have always been excellent for growing anything you could need for a good drink. Join Hogan in collecting berries. What exactly are these, you ask Hogan? When I would travel to Borsgar with my father, sometimes he'd buy us a few of these, Hogan replies. Couldn't be a luckier find, see for yourself. Try one and can feel energy returning to your tired limbs. Not taking a few more would be a wasted opportunity, you figure. As the hour becomes late, the caravan is eventually ready to uh, get back on the road. The day by Bureau of Stone is one of the few memoirs, memories that hasn't been tarnished by the specter of bad fortune, you think to yourself. Then you die of poison. Thistleberry. Interesting. Let's check that out immediately. Thistleberry. An addictive berry found deep in the Lang Loom forest that when eaten makes one feel pretty good about things. Plus to will on rest. Nah. A woman's stifled screams failed to overly concern anyone. It was only a matter of time before the expectant mother gave birth. The caravan is simply, simply excited by this first sign of new life since the trip began. Call for a day of rest and celebrations. Congratulate the new parents privately. Offer the family extra rations as gifts. Do nothing special. Call for a day of rest, are you serious? Well, we're almost in Ryan week, but we don't have any renown. Let's use this as a time of rest and celebration. When the baby's cries replace the mother's, the entire caravan cheers. You raise your drink to the family, saying, Tomorrow we rest and feast to strength and long life. Again, everyone cheers. Glad to forget their worries for some small time. Ouch! 
Now we're gonna starve to death instead. Rain Geek is more of a smattering of farmhouses than a proper town. Though judging by stray dredge stalking through empty fields, it is barely even that anymore. Celebrate new life by starving to death. Rainevik comes and goes as a long series of farmhouses abandoned and crawling with dredge. Farmers have probably al already fled to Borsgard. You try to hurry past but are eventually spotted. Dredge start ambling in your direction. What a surprise. What is that? Points out Andleif up near one of the longhouses. In the distance, a large person, clothes seemingly covered in blood, is cursing loudly and stumbling about. He staggers into a longhouse, laughing. The dredge heading your direction turn back, roaring, and begin to pound on the longhouse door. They seem to be holding a grudge against this particular person. I doubt the door will hold long. Rush to help. Against my better judgment, we should probably do something, you say. The others agree, even though it means putting them all at risk. As you quietly approach, the dredge have managed to splinter the door and break through. Hey! shouts a varl wearing all red, standing on the other side of the dredge. Came all the way up here just for me. He seems unconcerned about the dredge as he hoists his enormous sword. What? Scarlet Feather. Sigbjorn. Looks pretty badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ivor Sigbjorn. Uh, Gunnalf. It's the Rookway, I know. Yeah. Can't do much about it. Eivind, are you going to help or are we going to make do without you, maybe? Trigvi, I don't know. Too many party members. What? Why are there people sitting here? <laughs> this is a bit ridiculous. What's going on? Why do you have such low stats? I thought you were level 5. Uh, okay, 13 attack. Nobody has that great attack, so I think we're fine. Lots of slingers, though. attack Yeah. 
might shield smash you actually back through the ranks there. Oh, you can't. Or? No. Yeah, no, lots of slingers. At least we brought Trigvi, so. Crit, nice. Goodbye. Four slingers. Rook. Rook's got enormous uh, armor breaking potential now. How about seven armor break when we want to? Can't hit anything. So worth it attacking him. Probably not. Finish this. Kill one slinger, that would be nice. Let's do that. No. He runs, he knows what's gonna happen. You're not gonna get away though. Natural armor break is pretty good. The left is left behind as always. Okay, he can do a lot of damage, but instead he uses his stupid shield attack that does nothing. Thanks, game. So, let's see, can we actually swipe both of these assholes? I think so. 
clockwise, right? Bye-bye. Oh, now he realizes he could do 7 damage. Bit late. Power of the fish hook. Welcome to my mead house, Sigbjorn's house of mead. Logically enough, wasn't expecting a varl this far south or this drunk. I can see that. There are people huddled in the corners of the mid hall looking on with uneasiness. Who are all these? Who are your people? No, no, they're friends. They made this place. It's not really mine. You lured Dredge back to a room full of unarmed people. What is wrong with you? Come on, I saved everyone in here. They shared some fine drink. The best drink. Wait, I was saving your ass. Remember that part? No, I don't. I remember saving your ass. If you knew you'd come up here, you, you could have told me. What? What do we do with this guy? Uh, how much mead is left? <laughs> Are you serious, Rook? Uh... What the heck? Anyone here is welcome to join us because we're goody two shoes. The townspeople show you a huge stack of barrels filled with quality mead and help you haul them back to the caravan. I'll miss this place. Good memories. I like his attitude though, I have to say. Nice. With some help, you gather up the casks of mead and head back to the caravan. Sigbjorn and the other, survive, other survivors in, a, in tow. Uh, they caravan gives the boisterous Varl a large berth as you set out for Borsgard. Nice. Nice. Let's see if he can upgrade. Nope. It's just a very low stat uh, Warhawk. What's this? Plus two movement, minus one drawing aggro. Mm -hmm. I guess that's good. Plus two movement. It's more like an archer uh, item, isn't it? Pretty good for him charging and so let's use it. Cool. This was a very good setup. Let's use that. Three day supplies. Let's press on.
How far is it to whatever the place was called? Bjors... Bjors... Something. Damn, the loading times, people. What the hell? Not responding. What the friggin' hell? Nice assassin's trinket. Yeah, I think we just crashed the game. Yep. Awesome. Hope we're saving camp. It crashed. Hope it is saved. So do I. If it's not, I'm going to be very pissed. Reynivik, let's camp again. Looks like it. Yep, awesome. Last time I lost two difficult battles. Uh, 34 and on, by the way. Might be something we want to look into. Level 5, level 5, level 5. How about you, Trigby? Do you want to be level 5? Or you, Rook? You can actually upgrade both Trigby and Rook to level 4. Who cares about food, right? One point available. Mostly doing armor break with him anyway, so that increases defense. Worth it. Let's pretend it is. Oh, a let. We could have upgraded a let instead. That's much better. Damn it. Forgot about you, Let. That's okay. Yeah, that was a relief actually. I once lost two really difficult uh, progress on two really difficult battles. From a power outage, so I shouldn't blame the game for that. Ugh, what did I do? Sigbjorn wakes in a pool of his own sick. Why am I surrounded by small people? The other clansman let him sleep off his drunken stupor on the ground, and this morning he's paying the price. Help him recover. Reluctantly, your clansmen offer any food and drink they can scrounge together for the morning. Moaning Varl. When one offers thin meat, he pushes it away. In fact, take this away from me, he says, handing you his massive mead stein. Eventually Sigbjorn comes to you. I won't get into details, he says. 
I was supposed to bring those casks from Rainvik back to Borsgard. I drank maybe half, by accident. Point is, Sigbjorn continues, you don't tell anybody what happened and I won't tell anybody about the mead you got, okay? Trust me on this one. You agree and get back to travel? Bjorl's blessing, Jesus. We're getting lots of stuff. What's that? Meadstein, nice. Knock back on strength attacks of 3 plus 1 strength. Plus one strength is okay, but why would you want to knock back? <laughs> A draught of such intense potency that the drinker finds himself with almost uncontrollable vigor. <sighs> I'm just not sure what, what's so good about the knockback. I knock enemies back and they just come running up to me and punishing me in the same turn anyway, so you can move and attack. If that wasn't the case, sure. A gaunt man and woman approach the caravan, hands held high. A word, friend, the man says. We are poor farmers, down on our luck woman hits him and says we're outlaws plain and simple ten of us and we'll help you in a fight for some food up front what are your crimes send the outlaws away yep it's my first playthrough but I've been going at it for quite some time Damn, I don't know. Join us, but you'll be watched. What are your crimes? <sighs> what are your crimes? Misunderstandings, the man says. Mead houses are confusing. Never know when you drank your share. Woman hits him again and says, We've stolen, killed a few when we had to. Skills that might benefit you out here. Well then, you can benefit from your skills somewhere else. We are so much more than... The man stops as the woman glares at him. He nods and they shuffle away quietly. It takes until camp is set to notice that a few of your supplies have gone missing, of course. I don't want uh, murderers and outlaws in my, my group. What's this? Anar, the quirky old man with a leather headband, says uh, If there's one thing I know better than women and mead, it's, well, he smiles. Well, nothing. But I know when a group could use some help. Just nod and let old Anar make everything better. No questions now. What? It could potentially knock an enemy unit just out of range of one of your weak archers, saving it from getting killed. Yes, it's true. But it might just as well knock him out of range so I can't kill him that turn. If I could choose to have a knockback effect, uh, if I could activate it myself, that would be great. Uh, yeah. Not and let Unar make everything better. I'd rather not have any surprises, but if you're going to do anything, you were pretty funny before. 
That evening, Unar clears his throat and loudly recites a tale of travelers ending with war and death behind them. Seeking hope, instead, they carried on with courage using heart and head. Ah, he's giving us the gift of uh, storytelling. A strange poem, but the caravan is happy for a change of pace. Unar bows and turns to assist the cooks. The evening's meal is larger than ever, yet the supply wagons seem more full than before. He looked to thank Unar, but he's gone. Weirdo. Nice. As we pass steep cliffs, the sprawl of Boersgard comes into view. A city of contrasting rich and poor, opportunity and gamble. Our best hope for salvation, or our graves. Or both. 